I finished this almond butter recently. Instead of recycling the cup, I put it outside my window and waited. Everything you will see in this cup is carried by air and water. Before I took sample from the bottom of the cup, I decided to take a look at the debris floating above the surface first. There are lots of things to look at in it. You can see insect parts like legs and antennas. Here is a tricon. This is some animal hair. I suspect it belongs to a squirrel. The cup itself is placed next to a pine tree and occupied by a squirrel family. Perhaps the hair came from there. There are also microplastics. Look at the fibers dangling out from this piece. Like it or not, plastic is a part of our atmosphere now. I prepared four slides during July. In the first one, everything looked the same, except for dinoflagellites. They are gone. In the second week, the number of rotifers significantly decreased. You might think a microorganism sized one third of a millimeter has no physical effect on its environment, but you would be so wrong. All these contracting and expanding movements create tides enough to move this lumber of hair. On the third week, everything was either in cyst form or an egg getting ready to hatch. Sometimes nothing happens during the macroscopic expeditions then it would be best if you enjoyed the beauty of the simplicity of the micro-world, like this air bubble. On week 4, I saw the very first tardigrade in my life. If you are watching this video as an accident while surfing on the internet, let me tell you, tardigrades, also called water bears, are celebrities among microscopy enthusiasts. They are one of the most resilient organisms in the animal kingdom. However, I managed to kill one accidentally while I was filming its transformation. Of course, I will not show such macabre footage here on YouTube. I have a Patreon channel for that. But from now on, more tardigrade videos will be on your way. What else would you like to see under the microscope? Let me know in the comment section.